Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am Nick from Australia. Welcome back to the Thursday Night Football Review for Round 5 of the 2020 NRL season. I am Nick from Australia. Um, this is a bit of a new look for me on my channel. I've got a uh, new laptop today. Paid about 500 bucks for a new laptop today. So hopefully the YouTube videos have a lot more quality now. And hopefully things like that start to look a lot better. And um, yeah, so this is the first night football review. We just saw the Seagulls come back from 18-0 down. They beat the Broncos 20 points to 18. Bit of a uh, controversial second half. The penalty count against Brisbane was a bit over the top. I've got some stats here on my mobile phone. I'll, um, I'll go through that in a second. But before I get into the video, I want to give a, um, I want to give a quick shout-out to a couple of um, fantastic YouTube content creators. I want to give a shout-out to Always Brisbane Broncos for letting me use his equipment the other day. So um, if you guys haven't uh, checked out Always, Always Brisbane Broncos' YouTube channel, he's a mad Broncos fan. He's actually my brother, and um, honestly, you should go and check him out. He's really, very passionate about the Broncos, and he, um, yeah, he's very, very passionate. Also, a couple of more quick shout-outs to um, Dean Sullivan, Entertain House, Isaac Ritchie, NRL Vid 090, Warriors NRL Fanatics, on it, and the Bundy Chick 82. Got to go check those YouTube channels out, guys. They're absolute fire, and I reckon you really enjoy yourself while watching that. So let's get into the first on first on our football review. At half time, the Broncos led Manly 18 points to four, and they were cruising at one point Brisbane. As for the Seagulls, you know, I thought they were. Very, very flat in the first half. They didn't really show much in attack. Their defense was a bit terrible. That young Broncos winger, Xavier Coates, had a really strong game. Scored a beautiful try off a nice kick there from Anthony Milford. As for as for the Broncos, um, as for the Seagulls, you know, they were just flat as, you know. I thought first half they were awful. I thought Des Hassel would give them a spray at halftime, and I believe he did that. Um, they come out firing in the second half, but my God, let me tell you what the penalty count was in the end. It was absolutely disgusting, to be honest. You know, I don't, I don't blame any Broncos fan that's upset after tonight. The penalty count was twelve two. That is absolutely disgraceful. You know, I think the penalty count was five two at half time in favor of Manly, and then I don't know. Brisbane just couldn't get back in the game. I thought Broncos were the better team, to be honest with you. They Completed at a better, they completed better. They defended their ass off in the second half, but when it came down to it, it was just a lot of really tough calls went against the Broncos. I thought they were hard done by by the referees. You know, I had a bad feeling about this. You know, mainly were robbed last weekend against Parramatta, and I thought tonight the Broncos were a bit robbed by Manly. I thought the referees, especially Ashley Klein, I thought he, I thought he was a complete dead shit tonight. Um, the, the other issue I have is I've got to figure out with this, the six again rule shit, honestly. I'm a fan of the six again rule, but what is, what is the definition of a six to go rule? There's no consistency with the six again. There's a lot of, um, up in the air about it. It's sort of back and forth. You don't know whether it's six to go for a ruck infringement or, or if it's going to be a penalty for offside. So the six again rule, in my opinion, needs to be looked at because, the game's obviously a lot quicker than what it once was, but the problem is, with the six again rule, the referees say, no, 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 you got to get back on side here, you got to get back on side there. It's honestly a mess, in my opinion, and I think the six again rule is going to cost someone a massive finals game. I think the six again rule is going okay, but there's been some inconsistencies about it in the last couple of games, and it's been very dodgy, so I think it needs to be reviewed pretty quickly, because at the moment... I don't know if one, one referee can keep up with it. I think they need to have two referees. They can have one referee in the ruck, one referee ref the game or something, just to, so I can understand it. I think one referee is doing okay, but there's a lot of missed calls at the moment, and it's costing sides like Brisbane tonight. I mean, honestly, a 12-2 penalty count is just not good enough. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, looking at the stats here, you know, Manly, what, 11 errors, Brisbane 7, 17 tackles, man, missed tackles, Manly 11. Missed tackles in Brisbane. Broncos made about 21 extra tackles tonight, you know. You know, Brisbane were pretty hard done by. You look at the completion rate. Manly's was actually better than Brisbane's, but 
a 12-2 penalty count doesn't give you much of a chance. I understand Brisbane led 8 0 I understand that, but when you get blown, when the, when the, when the penalty count's 12-2, a lot of things. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say the Broncos were robbed or anything, but they were hard done by by the referees tonight, and I thought there were some very dodgy calls in that game tonight. I thought Adam Fanil Blake and Tom Chaboy, which were absolutely outstanding for the Seagulls, I thought they played really well. You know, for the Broncos side of things, you know, I thought, believe it or not, Darius Boyd had a blinder. Should have had two tries, but obviously the obstruction. That's, that's, that's another thing that needs to be looked at at the moment too, is the obstruction rule. You don't know if it's inside, outside, shoulder, everyone's confused. But from what I understand, this, this is my point of view of it. If, if your five mate gets the ball here, decoy goes through. If he stops halfway, it won't be a try. Unless the half or the back row or whichever player it is makes a defensive decision. At the end of the day, the obstruction rule is more confusing than the six again rule at the moment. It's confusing everyone. I mean, you don't know what a six again rule is these days. They just they put it in the air when they think something happened and they're not too sure. One referee doesn't know what they're doing. I think they need to go back to two referees or at least look at it because I know, I know the NRL came out and said Manly were robbed last week against Parramatta, but I think the penalty that got uh, Manly in front there was... It reminded me a lot of when Melbourne back in, would get away with games with a penalty goal and stuff. I just thought it was a shit way to, a shit way to end the game of football. It was 18-0, then it was 18-0, and I'm like, okay, golden point maybe. With a couple minutes to go there, Brisbane should have got a penalty in front. There was a ridiculous tackle. There should have been a penalty, but, you know, at the end of the day, I guess the Seagulls, they did enough to come back. The completion, I think they won, the, they won on the back of, obviously, the, the completion rate was really high, but... A couple of really dodgy penalties went against the Broncos, which ended up costing them the game. So, if Anthony Seabold goes in the press conference and says we were robbed, he has a fair case too, because how, how are you meant to win a game when it's a 12-2 penalty count? That's ridiculous. I, I know I, I know it was 8-0, but come on. 12-2 penalty count's ridiculous. I know a lot of people will think what I'm saying is absolute bullshit, but you can't tell me a 12-2 penalty count is fair. I mean, Brisbane didn't get one penalty in the second half. It was pretty ridiculous. But um, yeah. Look, it's not much of a game to review because it was just it was a lot of it was a very uh, stop started game, except for the first twenty where it was pretty back and forth. Brisbane dominated the first twenty. That's where they got their points and stuff. But I think Brisbane are getting close to a win. They get to be the Pango Junior back next week, which is a big in. I don't think Fafita will be rushed back. I understand Fafita is a chance next week, but I don't think he'll play. But um, tough night for the Broncos. Unlucky perform. Unlucky game there, but. Manly get away with a much-needed win, and the Broncos go to two wins and three losses, so pretty important game next weekend against Newcastle. But anyway, guys, that's probably going to do it for the review. Um, as, as you guys already know, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, I will be doing a live stream on the Warriors versus Cowboys game. So jump on YouTube. I'll jump on YouTube about 5.50, about 10 minutes before kickoff, and... Um, I'll be doing a live stream for the Warriors and the Cowboys. So that'll be 6 o'clock New South Wales time. If you're watching the game in New Zealand, it'll be like 8 o'clock. If you're watching it in England, it'll be like, what, 9 o'clock or something? I'm not too sure. But, yeah, if you watch my live stream, it'll be 6 o'clock New South Wales time. I'll be on at 5.50, 10 minutes before kickoff. Anyway, guys, I'm getting out of here. This is my first on a football review all completed. My man of the match tonight, my top three players on field. Number three, I'm going to give it to Darius Boyd. Number two, I'm going to give it to, um, uh, what's his name, Tom Trebojevic. And my man of the match tonight goes to Adam Fanil Blake. Anyway, guys, I'm getting out of here. Make sure you guys go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hope you guys liked a bit of the new quality that I've got going here. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Catch you guys then.